Hey guys, K2's Retro Workshop. Today, we're revisiting this AST All-in-One. The reason we're revisiting this machine is because a few weeks ago I saw a Reddit post about a guy that was having performance problems with his 486 build. He's running a DX33 processor and has no level 2 cache capability. A lot of people in that thread were saying that he needs to junk the motherboard and build a new system with a better motherboard that supports level 2 cache because not having that cache is going to ruin his ability to play games and stuff like that and it's not going to be worth it to really put anything into it. So, we're here to prove that wrong. <laughs> because I don't feel that level 2 cache on a 486 system is really the end of the line. I, I don't feel like it's something that should be tossed out. This AST Advantage does not have level 2 cache. It's an all-in-one system, so it's a custom AST motherboard, and we have no way to add level 2 cache. This machine originally came with a DX266. A DX266 was pretty much the... Um, it was a staple. I, I, I'm not sure what word to use here. If you find a 486 system that belonged to almost anyone of the time, the DX266 is highly likely to be in that machine. Enthusiasts and people going for more performance would install something like this. This is a Kingston turbo chip. This is essentially a, or it is, an AMD 5x86-133 on a little interposer here that has a voltage regulator so that you can install it and upgrade a system that it supports only 5 volts. Commonly, those would also have been the boards that didn't support level 2 cache. But what I want to do is I want to install this in this system and see what kind of performance it gives us. Because, in my opinion, you're not building a 486 to have a speed demon. We're talking x86 here, what a 486 will play, a Pentium 3 will play. If you want a performance system, just build a Pentium 3. We're going for, can we get decent 486 performance without level 2 cache? So, I can't do VGA capture on this thing, so I'm going to record from the screen directly some benchmarks between the 66 and the 133, and let's see if we can get a playable system out of this. So here are our benchmarks. We're going to start off with the classic 3D bench. Sorry for the focus on the right. I forgot to put the camera on fixed focus, and it's being stupid. Anyway, um, you're going to notice about a 20% bump in performance through this entire thing, and... I have no control, really, because I don't have the ability to add level 2 cache to this system. So we're just seeing what, in a real application, this upgrade can do as far as the increased performance on the system. And I've looked at Phil's Ultimate VGA Benchmark Database, which I will link below. They're all over the place. DX266s range anywhere from 35 to 45 on performance. So it really does kind of paint a picture of where all over the place these systems were at the time and just how hard it can be with different configurations to actually get a real number for how much this helps. But that being said, that 20% bump could be enough to get you over the hump. And clocking this down to 33 megahertz would significantly degrade performance on the system. So you know, instead of telling them to throw the motherboard away, you know, put a 66 in there, put a 133 in there. These upgrade chips, while not super common, they are around. The DX4100 also exists. There are also still surprisingly cheap uh, interposers that you can throw on the chip or between the chip and the motherboard that will allow you to run these faster 133 megahertz models on a 5 volt motherboard. Um, the I.O. is still 5 volt tolerant, just the core is not. So you need that 3.3 volt regulator to make it work if your motherboard's not equipped with it. But it's a significant increase in performance. 
Um, the system works really well. I didn't have a problem with it before, to be honest. And um, so, you know, take from that what you will. But the DX2 was basically the chip that everybody ran at the time. And most games for the era run fine on it. So if you need a little more performance, but you don't have cash, get one of these upgrades. Comes down to it. This machine is really a pleasure to use, uh, even more so with the 133 megahertz processor. That doubled cache more than helps when it comes to the lack of level 2 cache. It's faster, it's more useful, um, and then you have the clock speed doubling. So I personally do not agree that not having level 2 cache on a machine makes a 486 basically worthless. The upgrades and processors that are available if you don't have one of the nice upgrade chips you throw in a um, interposer on there and you can do a regulation down uh, make sure you have your heat sink and fan but in the end the, gra the even the full motion video is much smoother on this than it was and yeah that's it just a quick little video here while I continue working on this Tektronix that's giving me trouble. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Thank you.